And we're back again with acute bronchitis. So this is another very common pediatric pulmonary disease. You can see acute bronchitis as well in adults. Uh, so we'll go ahead with an overview. We'll talk about how this shows up, some differentials you should consider, and then how we go about diagnose, diagnosing this and treating this. Um, also uh, do some recommendations as well. So this is an inflammation of the bronchi, and this is also one of the top conditions for which patients will seek medical care. Um, so you can expect to get a question on this on the test. 9 to 14 million patients are diagnosed per year, and there's roughly an equal sex incidence. Triggers are typically infectious. However, there can be non-infectious uh, there can be non-infectious triggers. Uh, those would be due to any kind of pollutants in the air, so smoking uh, especially, and then inhalation of chemical pollutants or dust. So always important, ask mom and dad, is there smoking in the house? That's always a no-no when you are raising children. It's really not good for anybody, uh, but especially with children because they have very reactive airways and their airways are smaller, and so they're less likely to be able to deal with any kind of pollutants that might cause uh, inflammation in their airways. The trigger is very rarely bacterial in children, so we're really not thinking of bacteria uh, when we have a child with, uh, that presents with, uh, with symptoms consistent with bronchitis. We're typically thinking viruses and possibly chemical pollutants or smoking. Allergens can cause a similar picture, and so in many cases, asthma and acute bronchitis can be mistaken for each other. So what we really uh, look for to differentiate the two of these is, has there been episodes like this in the past? Uh, typically, children with asthma will have had repeated episodes of these uh, sort of respiratory problems. Uh, another way that might help you differentiate this is, does the child respond to a beta agonist, to a bronchodilator? And if they do, then we consider asthma, we'll want to run pulmonary function tests on them, um, and possibly bron uh, bronchial challenge uh, to, to diagnose that. But for the most part, uh, when you have a child in acute care, um, we're going to be looking at bronchitis unless they have any kind of past history. So the history and presentation uh, is common cold-like symptoms. Uh, so coryza, malaise, chills, low-grade fever, sore throat, back and muscle pain. That can also help you differentiate this from asthma. Uh, symptoms include cough and nasal discharge. That tends to be the more prominent symptoms. Uh, wheezing is a little bit less prominent than you might see in bronchiolitis. Uh, so a cough will initially be non-productive, but it goes on with time to become more, prom uh, more prominent and more productive uh, with time. So they start out with maybe a little cough, not coughing much up, the cough gets worse, and they'll ultimately start to cough things up. It might be clear, liquidy at first, and then it goes on to become colored or purulent. Very, 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 very important for the test and for real life. Uh, you'll get asked this when you're rounding on pediatrics. Uh, child is coughing up something gray or green. A lot of times uh, students will think, even residents might think, oh, that means bacterial infection. No, it does not. So colored purulent sputum does not imply bacterial infection. It doesn't imply that it's not a bacterial infection, but just because you have colored or purulent sputum does not mean it's a bacterial infection. Okay, important to know this. Highlight this uh, in your notes. Now, these children can also have emesis. Why can they have emesis? Well, first off, when a child is coughing a lot, you can get emesis from that, and then also from swallowing sputum. Sputum can cause emesis as well. So if they're coughing, swallowing sputum, you can get what's ca called a post of emesis. So they may have emesis in their history. If they have that, you don't necessarily need to think GI things. That can also be caused from constant this constant coughing. And coughing is a very prominent symptom with acute bronchitis. On physical examination, most of the time it's going to be unremarkable. We don't see as much wheezing with acute bronchitis as we do in bronchiolitis. Uh, the lungs can sound normal, 
So remember this: just because you have a normal auscultation does not mean you can does not mean you can rule out acute bronchitis. If you do see abnormal uh, or do hear abnormal findings on auscultation, typically they're going to be crackles or ronchi, possibly wheezing. They'll always be bilateral uh, because acute bronchitis is generalized, and that is in contrast to things like foreign body aspiration, uh, which can be more unilateral if it gets into uh, one of the main stem bronchi. Uh, the pharynx can be injected and that's just due to the viral nature of this uh, disorder. So a differential, uh, and this goes for any really a differential for, uh, for upper respiratory tract symptoms, wheezing, uh, always consider possible asthma, especially if there's a chronic history of things diagnosed as quote unquote acute bronchitis. So if there's this constant episode of wheezing, uh, then you can consider asthma. Again, wheezing is going to be more prominent in asthma, less so in acute bronchitis. You can try a bronchodilator uh, and see if things get better. If they don't, don't continue it. If it does, you can continue the bronchodilator. Uh, but just like in bronchiolitis, you don't want to continue a bronchodilator if there's no response. So you can try it, but don't continue it if there's no response. Bronchiolitis is a consideration. It looks a lot like acute bronchitis, uh, but acute bronchitis can affect anybody of any age. Bronchiolitis is a disease of the very young. So we'll consider bronchiolitis if the child is less than two, maybe less than three, if they show up with wheezing. Uh, but typically, uh, children who have bronchiolitis, because they're younger, because they have narrow, narrower airways to begin with, they will usually appear more ill than with acute bronchitis. Sinusitis can also occur in conjunction with an upper respiratory tract infection, just like acute bronchitis, but usually with sinusitis, by virtue of it being a bacterial infection, will be a higher grade fever, whereas with acute bronchitis, they may have a low grade fever or they might not have a fever at all. Uh, look for things like swollen eye or any kind of facial redness. That is certainly a red flag for sinusitis, and that should always be followed up by some kind of imaging, typically a CT or an MRI. Well, always a CT or MRI if you're looking for sinusitis. Uh, persistence without improvement tends to distinguish sinusitis for, from the upper respiratory tract infections, lower respiratory tract infections. Uh, so uh, look for that as well. Acute bronchitis is self-limited. It should be gone within three weeks uh, from the onset of symptoms. Pneumonia, uh, we want to consider in anybody uh, with uh, wheezing, fever. Uh, so particularly in children that uh, are, are younger, uh, we uh, look for viral pathogens as well. So bronchitis tends to be caused by a virus. Pneumonia tends to be caused by a virus in young children. Uh, a lot of times, some of the same viruses can cause bronchitis and pneumonia. Uh, now, the nice thing here is that we treat viral pneumonia the same way we treat acute bronchitis, and that is supportively. Uh, so, fever is usually slightly higher grade with, uh, with pneumonia, but not necessarily because if you have viral pneumonia, which remember is the most common cause in children roughly this age, uh, then uh, you usually tend to have low-grade fever with viral pneumonia, just like with whoops, just like with acute bronchitis. So that's not a really good way to differentiate this. Cough tends to be more productive uh, on onset with pneumonia, whereas with acute bronchitis, usually it starts out with a uh, non-productive cough. Constitutional symptoms might be more prominent in acute uh, in uh, pneumonia. Uh, and then the x-ray might show changes such as a streaking or low bar pattern, low bar pattern usually if it's bacterial. And so viral pneumonia versus acute bronchitis is not really an important differential because like I said, we treat them the same way. Uh, so really what we're differentiating out here is bacterial pneumonia from acute bronchitis. And with bacterial pneumonia, they'll certainly have a much higher fever um, and uh, they'll appear much more ill. And when you get an x-ray with bacterial pneumonia, typically you'll have that low bar pattern. Um, so with viral pneumonia, bronchiolitis, acute bronchitis, they're all viral in origin in the vast majority of cases, and we treat them pretty much all the same way. 
Um, so bronchiolitis, it's really a disease of very young children. Acute bronchitis, viral pneumonia can happen in older children, but like I said, they're treated the same way. So making that differential between those two is not so much important um, because you're really not going to do anything different. For diagnosis, this is clinical. So any further diagnostic testing is going to be reserved for patients in which other diagnoses can't be ruled out clinically, especially those patients with a higher fever or respiratory distress, in which case we might think uh, if they're an older patient, possibly, uh, or a younger patient, possibly bacterial pneumonia, particularly if they're a younger patient, we might think uh, of, uh, of bronchiolitis. And uh, in much younger patients, any kind of respiratory disorder has the potential to be much more severe uh, in as much as causing respiratory distress. So the younger the patient is, if they have wheezing, have difficulty getting air in, we're much more concerned uh, because they already have smaller airways to begin with. So for the most part, you can diagnose acute bronchitis clinically. You only re really need to do further testing if uh, if other diagnoses uh, can't be ruled out. Another one might be asthma if they have repeated bouts of these respiratory issues like wheezing and stuff. You can try the bronchodilator, see if that makes things better. Then if it does, you can do on an outpatient setting, you can do pulmonary function tests with bronchial challenge and nail down the diagnosis of asthma instead. If you do get a chest x-ray for some reason, the findings for acute bronchitis are typically normal. However, you can see some of the same things that you see in bronchiolitis, such as atelectasis, peribronchial thickening, and hyperinflation. So for management, you'll just get vital signs. Uh, respiratory rate and saturation should be normal. The temperature should be normal, but you can get a low-grade fever. Uh, you should discharge the patient with instruction to avoid smoke exposure and ensure rest with adequate hydration. And then follow up if the symptoms don't improve. Uh, acute bronchitis is self-limited. Symptoms should be gone within three month or three sorry three weeks of onset. Uh, recommendations: uh, If there's a high-grade fever or abnormal saturation, that should prompt a chest X-ray to differentiate out pneumonia. If there's recurrent bouts of quote-unquote acute bronchitis, that may warrant trial therapy with a bronchodilator and investigation for asthma. Like I already said, bronchial challenge and pulmonary function tests can then be obtained in an outpatient setting. Uh, another recommendation here that just comes to mind, if the patient has cystic fibrosis, then that changes the whole game plan for any kind of respiratory issue. You're probably, you will admit the patient um, if they're very young uh, with respiratory symptoms in the setting of cystic fibrosis. But what we're talking about here is an otherwise healthy child who presents with uh, these symptoms.